previously on the most money I've spent on an arcade stick. Yeah, guys, I have finished the background, which is like the roaring, letting that big, powerful roar. What the Universal Fighting Board doesn't fit with the um, Korean stick with the way that's set. This is how I did it before I sent it to um, Tech Innovations. My printer needs some more ink. Sorry, Ryu, but it's time to go. Zapdi is now taken over. It's soldered there, so I can't take this off anymore. You know, and... Hi, Moitz. My name's Tempfew Ibis, and this is my arcade stick. I've spent a lot of money on this thing, and it has also taken 10 months. This is the most money I've spent on an arcade stick. Well, here it is. Look how fantastic this looks. All right, I turned the lights off because um, they're pretty bright and um, it's hard to see everything else on here. They look good, the lights always look good, but on the camera it looks bad, or on the phone it looks bad, and it's probably because of a setting on the phone, but I can't be bothered to find it out now. So I'm gonna show you how the lights work later, but right now I'm gonna just show you the stick itself. and. As you can see, I'm very, very happy with how this has turned out. The artwork has come out perfect on here and the paint job as well, absolutely fantastic. As I told you already, I'm happy with the eyes and the ears and the spots. Man, everything has come out delightful on here. And um, when you look at the plexiglass, you see the, the cage on it and everything like that. One thing I've got to point out is that the cage and the plexiglass didn't really line up properly over here, but that was a mistake by, made by me. But um, I actually kind of like it in the sense that it, it gives it like a lot of 3D effect, you know? Like, it's almost like kind of like um, everything's all perfect here and it rips away out of that corner. It's trying to rip away of something like that. And it gives that Bob Ross effect, you know, you live in your own world. And that, <laughs> yeah. So, and like I said, I'm happy with the artwork. I'm also happy with how the art go goes with the buttons. Like I said, I've put uh, lightning shocks to link them all up, and that's it. Looks like it's all just together. What I also done here is I um, faded this part of the symbol out and sort of faded. So it looks it looks like it's fading from the background into the buttons, and it fades back out back into the background again with this button. Now remember, I told you guys about this button here. Yeah, why this button was so dark? Basically, if you look at this area of the button here, that in the back is actually kind of a darkish green. Like, it looks black on camera, but it's actually a bit of a darkish green. And um, there's a little bit of darkish red at the bottom there. And that's obviously because of Zape D in the background here. Because what I didn't want, I didn't want this to basically look like a chunk of his leg was missing and all that. So what I did is I took the image and just chopped off only the part there and put that part on the button. So now, it's like he's all fully there and the button's just on top of it. And I felt that made it look better. better. Overall, I'm happy with the fact that we have we can see Zape D in four positions. We've got the serious face. We've got the fly, flying kick. We've got the um, ground and pound. And we've got him roaring in the background. Everything is just perfect there. One thing that's a bit bad about this is the fact of the way it's closed here. As you can see, there's a bit of a gap. You can see down here, it's always, it's all smooth. The reason for this, unfortunately, is the Korean stick. At least it closes here. It means I can still play it. So let me show you guys right now. The Korean stick is, as you can tell, man, it's very, very, very big and that, but it's still perfect enough. Got the LVT3 and um, the Brook Universal Fighting Board with the easy mod. <laughs> I wish I didn't have to do any solder in there, but it had to be done. And um, it's got storage here for the USB, which I'm happy with. I shouldn't really be able to lose this this USB, you know. So everything there, it's all smooth. It's all tidy in there. It's just just perfect to the way I like it, you know. Like I said to you guys right now, man, it's creative, you know, and it's definitely comfortable to use because this Korean stick, yeah. Aka cap, aka cap. Like I said to you already, guys. Very, very happy with this. And um, I think it's time to go over the lights. As you can see, the lights are well too bright, like I said earlier. You know, I'm looking at the lights and they're fine, but yeah, but when I look through the phone, I can see that they're not. Maybe if I go. 
Okay, there we go. You can sort of see it much better now. Hope that the, 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 the background's all dark and everything that. See, that's the reason why I'd, I wanted to show you guys with the lights off first. So um, let me show you how this works. So right now I have a, a micro USB plugged into the LVT3 and it goes into the software. And this is where you get to select what colors you want the buttons to be when they're stationary and what colors you want when, you, when they're pressed down. And um, you get to set the stick as well. And you can also set the idle animation. Now, the wire doesn't have to be in all the time, but um, in this case right now, it has to be because um, um, the, the, the software is not saving, saving uh, my settings properly and it's not um, on it when I'm actually playing through the console itself. And that's a software issue and I'm waiting for uh, Paradise Arcade to solve that. But uh, to show you um, how the buttons and that stuff goes, I'm going to... Uh, so, because as you can't even, as you can see, I can't even close it all the way because of the wire. But, but for, just for now, I'm going to just show you uh, what colours I went with. And uh, before I do that, have you noticed the um, the cage? It looks like it's illuminating. It's lighting up. Yep, where all the etching's been done, it's lighting up. Like I said to you before, I didn't even plan this. That's just something that just happened, and I'm like, wow. Makes it, it just makes it a lot better. All right. It's actually not lighting up as much as it would be when you see it in the dark. It's just, oh, it's just beautiful, you know. But I can't really show it to you now because it's not coming up on the phone properly. But hopefully, hopefully you can see what I'm, what, what, what's there. All right. So, decide, so let's go over to the buttons now. So uh, when you look at the punch buttons, I decided to make them go blue. You know, you can see um, the green rim is still, you know, the edge is still green, but then the button itself lights up. You can see the blue. There, so I decided to go with uh, blue because um, Zapney's gloves are blue, and uh, when he punches you, you will, you know, you'll be seeing blue before you, uh, you know, you'll just be seeing blue. He, do, he usually wears other color gloves as well, but um, in this case, we got blue, so I decided to go with blue. And uh, for the kicks, though, I decided to go with red. So you're probably thinking, well, those big, massive white claws, isn't that what you'll be seeing? Well, he actually kicks here with his um, heel, kicks with the ball of the foot, kicks with a foot sword, as some people call foot blade, and uh, with a shin, an instep. You know, once he does land a kick on you, you'll be bleeding. So, <laughs> so I decided to just go with red, really. Makes a lot of sense there. And uh, um, for those buttons, I just decided to just go with green. You know, I'm looking at this, yeah, like through the phone and not through the phone. And I noticed the green is a little bit of a different green to what's really here. It's a different shade. But I guess, the light, like I said, the lighting on the phone, <laughs> you know. Now I decided to, now let me show you how the stick goes. I decided to have this light up just a little, but when it goes to up, down, left, right, I hope you can see that it, it lights up more. When you go diagonal, it lights up even more, more, more than what it was just going left, right. So, uh, I'm not sure if you can see that properly, but it just lights up more every time you do a movement, you know, and I really enjoy that. Now, let me show you um, the idle animation. Here's the idle animation I got. Let me t test that. There we go. You can see that. I really enjoy that. When the lights was on and you saw these ones changing color, you noticed they proper changed the edge and the buttons very, very well, whereas um, these one didn't. So you're probably wondering why didn't I just get make all of the buttons um, a clear edge like this? Because obviously the green edge is a bit too powerful for the light to sort of take over that. Um, well, the reason is actually simple, you know, because when you look at the LVT3, all right, so when you look at the LVT3, there's a tournament mode switch here, and when you switch it on, that it turns all the lights off. You know, switch it off, and the lights come back on. But, so you're probably going to find the lights ain't always going to be on. And the reason is, is because when you're usually at tournaments, you know, the rules are sometimes you have to turn the lights off because um, it may put other players off. So, um, yeah, that sometimes they don't allow it. So, like I said, it's, it's all, there's going to be times when it's going to be just like this. Now, when I'm playing like this, I wouldn't want it to be all just clear because it would it look kind of boring then. I, I like the idea of it being... Um, four greens and, and four clears so that's kind of why i didn't um 
make them all clear. I think it works great for the bat top, you know, having that clear and having it light green when it when I have the lights on, you know. It's got I like the um green shaft cover. So for that it works, but for the buttons it doesn't work. Now an unfortunate thing with the LVT3 at the moment is that um I can't even use the switch with the um tournament mode and that and that is something to do with the software again. So as of now, I can't actually turn off the buttons unless I just unplug some stuff and then plug it back in in different ways, which is quite long in it and that. But if I was gonna go to a tournament at the moment, it would have to be that. So I just can't wait yet till Paradise Arcades sorts out this issue. You know, it's taking time. I can't wait. <laughs> spending on the arcade stick there still may be a few little random things that i may get from um, here and there like for instance i might get i'm probably going to get a spare usb because you know just just in case i do happen to lose the one that's already in the stick i can't see how but i guess it would be good to have a spare to be fair in fact i actually um found online that there's actually a green usb cable for this arcade stick um, it's actually half the length, though, which is uh, which is a shame. But but when I think about it, most times when you're at tournaments or um, or where or conventions where you play it, you're usually in front of the console anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I think look, even here, I technically would just be in front of the console wherever I sat here or if I sat um, on my sofa there, to be honest. So I guess there yeah, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Um, really so yeah I I'm looking forward to getting something like that recently I've also just got this um, uh, this uh, arcade stick bag from split frame and that who knows I may I may customize the bag I decided not to add the price of the bag into this um, total price of the stick gear yeah, because uh, this is technically a um, accessory you know, it's not really part of the arcade stick. I'd be like, I've made it part of the arcade stick, but then think of it this way. Let's imagine if I was to have another arcade stick down the line or whatever, I, probably, I ain't really planned to another one. <laughs> this one was it was, was much, much enough. But let's just imagine, you know, this could be for that as well. This could fit anything, really. And it's done in a rucksack way. That's the way I like it. I always like carrying things on my back. And it's got so many pockets. Like, obviously, you've got the main pocket here. You yeah, to put the stick in. And... Uh, Got a zip up here and a zip down there for you to put um, extra stuff in. Probably like a spare USB cable. And uh, there's, there's, part, there's a zip here which I've got, which I put um, the cleaner for um, the plexiglass for. And there's another two pockets there. So there's a lot. This is probably the, the traveling bag. It's probably bags like this they may use um, when um, pro gamers travel and stuff. So what I'm also the what I'm thinking of doing is hiring hiring an embroidery artist, and maybe they could sew a good design of Zaytli's logo here. Maybe I could add another sort of thing to do Zaytli here and everything and all that. I wonder if you can get um, custom made um, icons that I could put on the zips. You know, maybe I could do something like that. <laughs> then it would be part of the Zaytli thing as well. I actually paid um, ninety dollars for this um, for this bag, so I don't I don't know I don't know if I needed to up 
so I put this into the um, yeah in, into the total price but but I'm still happy with that either way so like I was saying yeah you know I might probably just buy a um, you never know something else could come out and who knows but the main thing is all done basically at least I mean I'm not going to change anything big the main thing is done all of the artwork is done maybe there's a possible chance I might even do this because because obviously you've got the stick here on the back of it it's still showing a Street Fighter um, V sticker at the back which has the um, serial number and everything and all that what, I'm, what I might do is um Make a quick little zape the um, picture and get a sticker. Put all the serial codes and everything on that. Just make it look like it's an official zape the stick. I won't um, hire the tigress for this one. What I might just do is just take one of the pictures the tigress has already done and black and white it just so it goes onto there. And I just make a little sticker like that. I might I might do that, <laughs> you know. But the main area of the stick is done, like I said, and um, it's got everything I want. It's creative and it's comfortable to, to use, get the Akakat feeling in there. And um, also, it's got the Universal Fighting Board in there. So I'm happy with everything. Talking about the Universal Fighting Board, yeah, remember um, I said it works on more consoles than just the PS4 and the PS3. Let's put it to the test. Does it work on the PS4? Well, of course, it initially did. Does it work on the PS3? Of course, it's, it's a bit stupid, isn't it, really? But this is where it gets interesting. Does it work on the Xbox 360? Now I don't even have to bother about bringing extra controls and extra arcade sticks here to my friends' houses. Crime. Together we'll... Uh, uh, wrong video. Does it work on the Xbox One? Nice. Unfortunately, it only works for one game on the Wii U, and it's a game that I don't actually have, so I can't really test. I can't really test that. But what I am glad is, after an update that they did, once I updated it, it works on every game on the Nintendo Switch. So let's test that. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. My arcade stick works on all of that. Let's test it on the PC. Well, in my case, the laptop. I am ready. You know what? It's such a shame that um, the Brookville Universal Fighting Board doesn't work on um, more games on the Wii U. Because one game I would love to have tried the arcade stick on is Super Smash Bros. And um, when it comes to Super Smash Bros. on the Wii U and Super Smash Bros. Brawl, the control I used to use is this. And um, I know that they're not going to allow me to use this on the Switch because of how it plugs, unless they bring in some sort of adapter or whatever, right, yeah? So, I, there's a possible chance I may try to use the arcade stick. I don't know if I'd be good with it then, after all the wonders I could do with that, I'm probably so used to that. So it would be nice to practice on Smash Brothers Wii U now, but um, I can't do it. I can't do it yet. It is a bit more of an experiment anyway. I know that I can buy Brooks Super Converter which might make it work on the Wii U there. And that costs about 35 quid. Um, at the moment, I'm just not sure if I'm going to um, experiment, but, but, you know, just buying that just to experiment only. I'm not too sure. So, but um, one thing I noticed that Brook also have on their website, they sell super converters that work for almost everything. You can even make it, make, I can even make my arcade stick work on the Neo Geo if I wanted to. That would, that would be absolutely brilliant. You can also get um, one to make it fit, to make it plug into the PS2 as well, so I can use my arcade stick on the PS2. You know, the dream that I have right now, I'm just hoping they make a super converter or something that will make it plug into the Mega Drive. That would be amazing. You know, the Mega Drive or the Genesis. That'd be just, that'd be just amazing. Because then once I get it plugged into that, It'll be able to plug into the master system as well probably and it'll 
be able to plug into the Commodore 64, the Atari 2600. I'll be able to use my arcade stick basically on all of those consoles. So that's something that I wish Brooke here would make. That's that's something that I'm just hoping would happen right now. And um, yeah, we've got to just see what's going to happen with um, Smash Brothers. But I know there is some people who do play Smash Brothers with arcade sticks, and I could be next. Well, now, here's the things here that I plan to um, sell on eBay, or try to sell on eBay. You know, there's a possible chance. I know that loads of things are probably not going to sell here, yeah? I know that there's <laughs> hardly a chance that, that um, these six white buttons and two small ones are probably going to sell on eBay because quite a lot of people who have arcade sticks already have white buttons like these. You know, they usually come with a lot of um, arcade sticks. So I know that as a high, as a hard, there isn't that much of a possibility that it will sell. I'm, I'm confident that there's a possibility that these two over here could sell. Here's the easy peasy mod and here's the Brook Universal Fighting Board. Remember I ended up having two when I got the other one. Um, these still work. These still 100% work. It's just the fact that they don't work with a Korean stick. But not everybody who buys an arcade stick is going to want to use a Korean stick. They're going to use the original Japanese stick that comes with it or any other stick that's that's involved. And these will these will fit in it and it does work. So um, And remember, guys, it'll help you um, use your arcade stick on loads of different consoles, as, as I just shown. So I'm pretty sure that there's people out there who may want that. I got um, some random dust washers here because, as you know, I got my customized dust washer, so I don't need um, those here. I got three ball tops, but as you can see, I switched the back top here in it, yeah. And um, I got um, this back top here, yeah, from uh, that that came with the um, crown stick. You know, people still sell these by themselves as well. It doesn't remember the top can't be removed, so if you like the black on it then yeah it's all good um also i've got green plungers here if you um if you've been paying attention you'll know why i ha have these plungers and i have also a clear button oops a clear button a small this is a small button a clear one that has a green plunger in it if you've been paying attention here to this whole documentary you understand why i have these and hopefully there's somebody out there that would like that also got a um the old shaft cover here because yeah, the green one is pretty pretty brilliant with that yeah and i've got these pcb standoffs here i've got the, these are the big ones some people usually use things like these to do f stuff in their computers i heard they could even they were even done in laptops so if anybody needs that for anything uh also uh there's Four Samwa rings, so well, I've got eight three. There's four in here, and I've got another one there. So I've laid them out. There's a, these are Samwa, these are all Samwa rings. They go around buttons and stuff. So if anyone needed some spare Samwa buttons, hey, what are, you, what are you doing? Trying to get into those boxes? Hey, get that in from there, you. <laughs> but yeah, um, uh, oh yeah, and um, I've got um, two of the J JOF length um, shaft converters to convert um korean stick you know with using the Jap japanese mountain board so so we're, we're using the crown to convert it you know into using the um, but ball tops or bat tops you know so uh yeah um they've got two the two of those if people are interested in any of these you know hopefully <laughs> Hopefully, you never know, I can make a little bit of money back from um, the process of this arcade stick. Never know. So I decided yeah, to answer some questions that I have a feeling that people are thinking that we're probably going to ask on this video. And I think some people have asked a couple of these questions yeah, back in the time when I was actually working on this um, arcade stick. So therefore, um, I kind of have the, the answers right here. So I'm thinking people are probably thinking, what exactly is Zaytli? So, like I said, he's a cat I made in 2002. What he is, he's like a furless hybrid amphro, which consists of um, an African serval and um, with sloth features. So, um, that's that's the mix that I gave that. Obviously, I made him green because that was something I always <laughs> I always wanted wanted to make a green character. And 
I gave him black spots and black stripes and black areas and ears where you would normally see on the actual serval to just give that a little bit more brilliant effect. I built him up over the years, add, make it, adding him, giving him different things as, as we all go on. And he, he's just a character that I just like a lot. You know, another question I believe that people want to know is um, how comes not a 10th view ibis stick? You know, people were thinking they were going to see me on the stick. You know, uh, well, I always wanted to do um, a stick with a character that I created, to be honest. Right, yeah. Um, obviously, Zapd has been a big project of mine for a very long time. And I made this character 15 years ago. It's finally time to put him on something that... You know that everyone can everyone can see him now. You know what I mean. So um, now, besides, I'm a, I, I did my music, I did the animation, I do um, a lot of Photoshop stuff. Now I do a bit of martial arts here and there and everything and all that. Yeah, but you know, ZD may not be real, but he's always going to be a better martial artist than I can ever be. You know, so I, I decided to go with a ZD ZD stick a bit. I, and I'm very happy with that turned out anyway here, yeah, so that's kind of why on that one. And another um, question is, how come you didn't go to B15 SDM um, designs? You know, they really make brilliant arcade sticks and probably would have got a cheaper price than what, what you paid. I know a lot of people are going to say that. Well, when it comes to B15, D, um, is it GM? No, sorry, SDM. Um... Well, I tried going to these people. I tried messaging them. They never responded to my messages. There was a time when I was working on something and I uh, went to their website and found out they were closed for a pretty long while. And this was more or less at the time when I wanted to start the arcade stick. And um, they were closed. And even when they opened again, I messaged them another few times and they never responded to any of my emails. So they were never really. So I tried to go with these guys, but they didn't. They didn't come back to me. You know, I don't understand. Don't understand why their work is very good. They're very phenomenal, and I, I pro probably believe that maybe yes, if I did go to them from the start, maybe we could have had. We could have had a, a complete different, even more customizable looking stick. Who knows? But um, like I said already. They didn't um, come. Back. They didn't come back to me, so it's so unfortunate for them. I even wanted to go to them about um, customizing a bat top. Still, uh, they, they never responded to me. So that's just, that's a simple reason I can give on that one. And I think a lot of people are thinking now. Now that you've spent all of this money, you know, are you planning to become a pro gamer? Are you plan to take fighting games a bit more serious? Yes, that's def that's definite. You know, I've always wanted to take part in a real ba big gaming tournament. I don't think I'm good enough for that yet, but I've always wanted to do a lot of practicing, and I guess doing this stick has given me a lot more motivation, and I'm going to be practicing a goddamn lot more than I have ever have done on um, fighting games like Tekken, as even other. Um, fighting games out there that I'm going to be practicing on as well to help keep um, everything fresh and all that and I'm going to be using the arcade stick a lot you know this will this ain't going to waste I will be using this thing a lot and hopefully I do get good enough and I hopefully I do play um, in a big tournament one day and mate if I get good enough that'd be really great hopefully I could become a pro gamer That'd be amazing, you know. But it's gonna be gonna be a tough road. But at least I got this out of the way, though. We are coming to the end of this documentary, so therefore, 
Well, look at this. Here it is, man. This arcade stick has took me a long time, and I've spent almost 1,700 on this. Yep, it was a bit of an expensive journey. But, um, and like I said already, there's probably still going to be a few little nitty bits here I might get and stuff and for it. Still a few things that may, may do here and there for it. Um, it's not 100% yet because of a software issue, not because of the actual product itself. So therefore, physically, phys physical stuff, everything works, you know. But um, it's all going to be sorted. It's all going to be sorted. But as of now, the video is almost done. You know, so you're probably thinking, yeah, this was expensive. I think the reasons, I think it all boils down to three reasons why, why the, this was actually expensive. And one is the artwork. There was a lot of artwork involved in this. Second is the shipping. A lot of the parts for this, they all, there was shippings and there was postage. And as you can see, some parts... The shipping was more money than the actual product, which was unfortunate. I know that if all of these parts that I have bought, if they were just all in my local local shopping market, all the parts I bought for this, this would have been such a cheaper product. If everyone lived in England, this would have been this would this this would have been much cheaper. The third reason is the mistakes. I have made lots of mistakes with this, and it meant I had to spend more money to fix those mistakes. You know, I realize, I mean, I did my research before I, I done this, but obviously it wasn't enough. I have made more mistakes, even with some research. There were some parts that I didn't research. I may have missed out on things. There's also some cases I realized I could have done differently, which would have been cheaper. I messed up. No one's perfect. You know, but overall, I am happy with how this turned out. I'm going to be using this. I'm going to be playing this proper a lot you know so right now what I would like to do is give a lot of thanks to some people and I happen to have written it down because I don't want to miss anybody out right yeah so first I'd like to thank Leah Smazic aka the Tigress for an amazing artwork what she's done here as you know I've been a um, a client of her for years and because her work's always been phenomenal and she stepped it up a notch for this man. She stepped it up, you know. It's made made it it's made it it's just made this much better. You know, it's absolutely fantastic. And um beautiful Andrew, I'd like to um thank him, Optimus Funk and S2K. I want to thank those three for all the amazing advice that they've given me through the throughout the process of this stick. Thanks very much to you guys. Look at what you guys helped create. And I would like to thank Mad Cats for making the products that, that that you know you've made it so open to being so customized customizable. You know, you guys have started off this product technically and um look what I've managed to make out of your product. I hope you guys are watching this. I am I am damned, I am bummed to see that you guys are not here with us anymore. I mean, the company's not is down is down now. You know, I wish it wasn't. Hope you guys can make a comeback some sort of way. I wish they never went bankrupt. But you guys have helped out. We, we, you guys, the product you've made, you've started off making this thing possible. So thanks very much for that. I hope you guys are hearing this. Um, I want to thank Stephen Jameson for making me aware of the Korean stick. And let me know how good it is for um, Tekken. And it is. It is definitely a lot more smoother. It definitely is a lot more smoother than most other sticks. And, you know, you was right. It was a shame that it's, it made a lot of um, problems on the inside of the um, stick. But, man, it's all worked out in the end. Thanks very much, man. And I would like to thank uh, Mr. Houlihan, who is my Taekwondo instructor. And I'd like to thank the whole entire um, Taekwondo class anyway, right? Yeah, for um, teaching me the sidekick and how the sidekick works and everything and all that and giving me the knowledge on it because I use that knowledge to help make the reference here yeah, for the um, flying sidekick here. So, um, like I said, thanks very much yeah, to all of them as well. Everything, 
everything that's all a big help with it. Even if it was a small little tiny help for the arcade stick, it, it's big thanks from me. I appreciate all of everything. Um, I'd like to thank Uncle Ron for um, the soldering, um, helping with the wire cuttings on um, the lights in, in, in um, for the stick and um, helping me with tidying up on, in, on the inside as well and also helping me for cut, helping me with cutting the buttons um, cu cutting the um, paper around the buttons and all that getting it just getting it just right and I'd like to thank Stephen in all for printing the buttons your printer was amazing and you've got just amazing you've just done an amazing job as well man I would like to thank um, Stav Economo for helping me with the references for some of the buttons and um, this next one's a big one for me as well I would like to thank Extreme Consoles because this painting job you've done is absolutely brilliant. I'm more than happy with it. And, th and that's not just the reason why I, I want to thank you a lot. I actually went to many different companies who does the same thing as you. Um, spray paint consoles and other things and all that. But they all turned me down. I really, want to, I, really am, I really appreciate you guys that you took this job. Definitely happy with it. You took this job and amazing. This is amazing. I'm very, very proud of this, man. God, you guys got it just right. Just great, man. Absolutely brilliant. You know, I also would like to thank Tech Innovations. Your products are also good as well, man. You know, um, the plexiglass and the dust washer is amazing. And I'm so, and I, like I said, I didn't even know. That it lights illuminates when um, you have lights in there just makes it that much better you know just makes everything even perfect i would like to thank um brooke um for making the universal fighting board and i see all your other products as well and all that and you've done a fantastic job with making just for all the wonders that you can make and um I'd like to thank Jason Hicks for his product to make it easier to to put the Brook product in. And I'd like to thank Jason Hicks personally as well for helping me with the situations when that side of things was going wrong as well. Because he actually gave me a bit of advice to um, help out with uh, the soldering and that sort of stuff. And um, I'd like to give a bit of a thanks to um, Paradise Arcades. Despite we still have an ongoing problem right now, which is which is the software, you know, all the other products I've bought from Paradise Arcades and all of the advice they give me with some of those other products, they've all been brilliant. They've helped me out a lot with this um, stick as well. Definitely happy with everything. It's just, 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 you guys just need a new um, developer. <laughs> That's all I got to say there. I like to give um, extra thanks to. Um, Arcade World and Arcade Shop, Shock, because this is um, because obviously I got most of the products and stuff here from from them, as well. They are two good stores. I'd like to give a little bit of a thanks to um, Gummo, who made the Easy Peasy mod. Even though I didn't end up using that, at least um, you know, it. I I like to thank um, the man himself, Gummo. For at least trying to help out with the situation. It just didn't work out in the end. But but guys, without all of you, this would not have been this would not have been possible. So I want to just so I really appreciate all of this. I thank everybody for watching these videos. And I also thank everybody for the support and helping this dream come true. Because I finally got this. It's, it's amazing. Brap! Once again, thanks very much for watching this series, and just remember, I now have my weapon to beat your ass at Tekken. <laughs> thanks. I'll see you all later. Love who you are.